mythic woke mob that you mentioned to try to scare your viewers. I think it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not because trying to scare the viewers. Football is see... not about politics. It's not about politics. Oh, You're I making think that's it your about entire politics. economic model. What? Your entire economic model is to what scare other your sport viewers. Should, that's what your other whole sport? gig. I mean, Steve, you and really the only want way you really that you want football your to be your behavior. Banned. Yeah, you want football to be no, banned. I, I mean, don't. You, this you is what you do. Game. Laura Ingram had a guest on her show on Fox News to talk about what she feels is players in the NFL being political. Laura Ingram doesn't like this. She has said before that players in various sports should just shut up and play. So she doesn't want them to express any opinions or, or anything, unless, of course, it is professional athletes who will go against the quote-unquote woke mob or say that they support Donald Trump. But otherwise, she wants them to just shut up and play. So this guest went on her show to talk about this, and he didn't quite give her the answers that she was wanting. And he pushed back against her, which doesn't happen very often on Fox News. David Pakman broke all this down. We're going to take a look at clips from Laura Ingram's show on Fox News as well as clips of David Pakman. I'll share my thoughts here from time to time. This gets pretty good. Let's check it out together. Steve Almond has been a guest on my program multiple times, and I don't like calling Steve a sports writer because he writes about so many things. But Steve does sometimes write about sports. Laura Ingram on Fox News thought it would be a good idea to bring Steve Almond on last night to talk about what's going on with Damar Hamlin who um, suffered a cardiac arrest during the game on uh, Monday night. We've talked about it already to some degree. Uh, this was a very, very bad idea for Laura Ingram. Um, he brings up that Fox News has thrown money to settle sexual assault claims in sort of making an analogy to how the NFL will settle brain injury stuff without actually changing the underlying circumstances of football that allow the brain injuries to become common. Everything about this interview is absolutely fantastic. And eventually Laura Ingram just cuts it off when he tries to bring up Laura Ingram's past misdeeds when she taunted Parkland shooting survivors, uh, leading advertisers to flee her show. This is really good. Let's go to the first clip. Putting monitors and helmets to try to make sure that people aren't suffering too many concussive or sub concussive events. These are things the NFL could do tomorrow. But they're not going to do it until there's an economic incentive. The reason they settled that lawsuit is because they had a PR problem. It's like at Fox News when you have, uh, you know, hosts who are allegedly sexually harassing people. Fox News throws money at that to right. make that PR problem go away. That's what happens so with do you not, corporations or powerful right, so, people. Well, nobody, nobody has done more. I mean, you know that, expose, Laura, expose. right? You know that. Well, you yeah, know that's, that's that, a cute little mo. But I'm. I love it how get, every I'm, time guests call out Fox on Fox. These hosts have some line like, oh, that's cute. That's a cute move. No, he's showing up and he's pointing out that that which you are criticizing someone else for your employer also does. It's not about being cute. It's that they don't know how to handle it when guests actually point these things out. Let's go to another clip here. They have enormous no, amount the of, fans of influence. The ones what who, happened during well, George the Floyd? They had enormous amount of influence on corporate America, the actions of corporate America, the actions of the NFL. I mean, they changed the whole corporate approach to race and equity and, and all the things that happened two and a half years ago. So you say the players don't have all that much influence. I would say the players have an enormous amount of influence, maybe not as much as they want. But there's there's huge economic uh, yeah. upside for everyone here, correct? Well, I know you're focused on the players. I'm focused on the fans. And what I essentially believe is not that any government ban is going to make football safer and certainly not some mythic woke mob that you mentioned to try to scare your viewers. I think it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not trying to scare the viewers. Football is not about politics. It's not about politics. Oh, you're I making it about politics. Oh, I think that's your entire economic model. <laughs> so I love how Laura Ingram just acts like, how dare you? Our entire economic model is about scaring viewers. Yeah, that's all they do all day long. This group is coming to get you and this group is coming to get you. And this group, you know, there's an immigrant under your bed right now waiting to attack you. That's all Fox News does. So it's it's hilarious for her to act just shocked and chagrined that this guy would dare to say to Laura Ingram that you try to scare people when that's Fox News's entire business model.
Your entire economic models to what steer other your viewers. Should, That's what your other whole sport? gig. I mean, Steve, you and really the only want way you really that want you football change your to be behavior. banned. Yeah, you want football to be no, banned. No, I, I mean, don't. You, this you is what you this do. Game. Oh, come on. You, you, what, you, you want football essentially changed into, I don't know what. Like, I, I don't know. You have a sensor in the helmet, I guess. Okay. Propose one. You know, it, well, is that, know, is that, is that technology to troubling to you? No, not in the if slightest. If you're concerned about the not players, in the slightest. why wouldn't not you want the them slightest. to play in a way that I was safer? You're not I concerned about the players. The thing about people like Laura Ingram is Steve Almond accurately points out it's it, it is about scaring viewers. It's all about scaring viewers. And when it comes to football, the way they the really scary thing about football and I, and I now have friends who have kids who are sort of starting to get curious about football and they're like, oh, my goodness, the last thing I want is my kid to play football. So they're trying to find a balance between straight up saying you are not allowed to play because then that can cause this kind of reaction where the kid goes, well, I really want to play if I'm not allowed to play just kind of finding the right way to dissuade, softly dissuade uh, their, their kids from wanting to play football. The, the thing about football is it is fundamentally dangerous. The brain injury stuff is completely off the charts. It's shocking to me that football even still sort of exists at the college level. And I think it's possible that if and when the lawsuits start at the college level, uh, it will really, really damage the, the prospects of football. I, I find it you know, mildly entertaining. There's other sports I like better, but it just seems crazy that it's still a thing. Laura Ingram and her model and the model of Fox is we've got to scare the audience. We have to scare the audience and, and ideally about what the left or, or someone uh, uh, external to our movement is doing. So with football, it's they want to have a nanny state where they ban a sport or they want to overregulate football by saying, oh, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to force players out. Concussion protocols are too strict or sensors in the helmet. It's all crazy or what it all has to be fear, fear, fear. They're going to take it away. And with football, there's also the patriotism angle, which they love, which is there's something patriotic and manly. It's both patriotic and manly. And so any skepticism about football and, and football's viability is not only sissy, it's also anti-American. This is the whole sort of narrative. But when it like comes right down to it, Laura Ingram kind of has no choice but to say, no, I mean, I guess I'd be fine with a sensor with a sensor in the helmet that indicates, you know, what were the what were the G forces? Was there a possible concussion or whatever the case may be? Because these are these are perfectly logical things as half measures to really dealing with football big picture. Now, this is not the hill I'm going to die on. I'm not going around looking to end football. It I think David Pakman, I think this is a bit of wishful thinking on his part that football is going to go away or or go anywhere but i do think he's right what he's saying where you have this bizarre thing and i'm a huge college football fan i don't really care about the nfl that much but i, I but i i love college football and and i get the you know i'm somewhat conflicted about the issues with football the whole wrapping it up in patriotism has always been bizarre to me, the military flyovers and all that kind of stuff. But that's sort of a separate topic where the Department of Defense has gotten in and they have these mil these weird military displays and all of this with, you know, college football and the NFL. But I don't know why as a football fan you wouldn't want, you know, I think they're they've had improvement in helmet designs and pads and all those kind of things to make the players safer. And I don't know why you would, you do have the people out there that it's, you know, any efforts to make anything safer at all that then the players are sissies or whatever, like David Pakman has said. And any of these people that say that, I would love to see them. I, I wish they had a, just a day each year that this, the average Joe that's commenting on football players that they aren't as tough as they used to be and all that, that they could just go and spend a day on a football field with with a bunch of professional or college athletes and try to go through a practice with them, you know, and th that would go away really quickly. But I don't know why if you are someone who presumably Laura Ingram is a football fan, if you're a fan, why you wouldn't want them to be as safe as possible while still being being able to play the game, I understand there's a you can have a happy medium there where you could go too far one way or the other. But if you are a football fan, I don't know why you would want the players to not be as safe as they can possibly be. 
It just doesn't make sense. It's shocking to me that anybody lets their kids play football at this point. And I know let them, you know, how, how, what it, that that's a whole difficult premise premise as well. Uh, but this is how these folks operate. Make everybody afraid. Steve Allman's completely right. When it comes down to it, you go, well, it's not so much that I'm opposed to thing number one or two or three, but we should be very afraid of what they are trying to do. Here's the last segment during which Steve Allman points out she had a problem with advertisers fleeing for things she said, and then she just ends the interview. So thrilling. The reason that people change their behavior is because there's an economic incentive. A couple of years ago, when you talked right, to the got, survivor of Parkland yeah. mass shooting, All you right, we apologized got oh, yeah, because yeah, advertisers yeah. Steve, withdrew nice from try, your show. Buddy. And your nice hit. try, buddy. Little buddy. I appreciate it. It's cut. It is cut, cut, cut. Um, yeah, so other guests have done this stuff before. And the reaction from the hot Fox hosts is is very similar. It's cut it, laugh it off and say it's an ambush or it's cute or it's funny or whatever the case may be. Standard M.O. They all seem to know how to do it, but very nicely done by Steve Almond. And I mean, listen, this is Steve Almond's bailiwick, right? The, to invite him and think he's not going to do this is really the thing that shows you don't really know who he, who he is. Really nice job. We should have him back on the show soon. So it's always great when somebody is going to is able to go on to Fox News with these hosts like Laura Ingram and really expose them for what they are, that they're just fear mongers. And you don't get this too often. But like David Pakman said, it's great when it does happen. Because the f the hosts like Laura Ingram do not like this kind of thing. And as Laura Ingram's guest said, they exist entirely, you know, they exist to be propaganda for the Republican Party, and they exist with a business model of fear, fear, fear. Everything is changing in a way that you don't like. All of these different groups are coming to get you. And, you know, Laura Ingram and the other hosts on Fox News, their fans are people in their 70s. They're a group that they watch the news the most, and they're susceptible to these this kind of fear mongering by people like Laura Ingram. So great segment, I think, by David Pakman here exposing this, sharing these clips of Laura Ingram of Laura Ingram's show. Let me know what you think. Make sure to leave me a comment about David Pakman or Laura Ingram, Fox News, anything else that you want to comment on. I love to see and, and read your comments as well as your likes and subscribes. My channel's growing really quickly. I want it to continue to grow, and that's as a result of your comments, likes, and subscribes. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do so. This is Chris on Culture, and I will see you in the next video.